Well, hello, friends, and welcome to another Ask Zach. Today, we are going to talk about John Leventhal, and specifically, we're going to talk about seven concepts, playing concepts, musical concepts that I've stolen from John. I've interviewed him twice. I interviewed him for Vintage Guitar Magazine and Print, then I did a video interview of him for the True Tone Lounge, and so... If you're wanting to do that deep dive, you know, watch those. But here are practical things that I have stolen from John and used. You know, I've never like learned any of his licks note for note, except for, you know, right there, uh, what I played in the intro to, uh, to kind of showcase his playing. But uh, I've stolen tons of concepts from him. So that's what today's episode is going to be about. All right, guys, if you've been enjoying the show and you haven't subscribed yet, well, please go down in the corner. If you've already subscribed, well, your support is what keeps the thing going. So there's tip jar information down in the description, and you can go to askzack.com uh, where you can check out Friends of Ask Zach, which is a way to support me on a monthly basis, or uh, there's also merch there. So we've got things like this uh, It's a Sickness or coffee mugs and other things. All right, let's get down to it straight into number one of seven. So... First thing that I uh, stole from John Leventhal was using a capo on electric guitar. Now to some of you younger guys, this might be, you know, old hat and you might think nothing of it. But for me as, you know, being a 48 year old Texan, uh, you know, you didn't use a capo on electric guitar. If you did, you would have been laughed out of the joint, unless you were Albert Collins. If you were Albert Collins, you were given a pass. You know, he was from, from Houston, and he, uh, you know, he just, you know, he, he could do that. But, uh, yeah, it was just not acceptable, and it was just kind of seen as, you know, what's wrong with you? I mean, maybe you use a capo on an acoustic guitar, but why in the world would you use a capo on electric? Well, watching John play and seeing him use one, it kind of made it to where, oh, this is actually acceptable and it is actually okay. And I found that you know, nothing sounds as good as open strings. And when you start capoing on an electric guitar, you're able to get open strings, you're able to get different voicings and different you know, stacking of notes for chords, and you're able to pull the guitar out of the range of maybe the B3 keyboards, other things, and you're able to really make the electric guitar pop out at certain times and do really interesting things. Um, so here's an example of me taking that concept and putting it into, into play. So I was playing with some friends and uh, they wanted just kind of a, an intro to this song. And uh, at first I really didn't know what to do. And then I thought, hey, I'll use a capo, put a little tremolo and a little delay on there and uh, play, you know, what in some ways is kind of like a finger picked acoustic part with a little bit of double stops in there. So let's see, I'm gonna turn the uh, Echo Park pedal on Let's see if I got the uh, the uh, delay, I mean the uh, tremolo going on the old 1964 AC10 that's been rehoused. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so this song is in the key of D, and I've capoed up on the seventh fret, and uh, I'm just gonna you know play what I you know came up with. Thank you. 
So then, of course, the band would come in. So uh, and I think maybe I extended that a bit more than what I originally played. But that part really worked well. And that was just an example of me, you know, blatantly, you know, kind of thinking, what would John Leventhal do? So capoed on the seventh fret, used a little tremolo and delay, had both pickups on and just kind of did a, a finger picked part with a little bit of double stopping and, and a few runs. Uh, you know, these. be something specifically that he's played but I kind of you know think of, of those of those kind of things so yeah the capo is just a fantastic way of um, of moving the guitars range around getting it out of the way of other instruments opening up other things you can play so maybe you use it for overdubbing and you play a, a similar thing but it it helps you know change things up and it's just a, an amazing tool and if you have not been using a capo on electric guitar, you should start. Number two is uh, is just feel free to modify your Telecaster so and be a Telecaster guy. So John mainly plays a Tele, and of course, you know, I've been a Tele guy since I saw, you know, Albert Lee and James Burton, but, uh, you know, Leventhal plays a lot of Telecasters. He owns a lot of Telecasters because it's a sickness, and uh, he's always changing necks around and modifying guitars, changing out pickups, uh, changing out bridges. And uh, you'll see guitars he has with full-size humbuckers up there, some that have mini humbuckers up there, some that have an ashtray bridge, some that have a goto bridge. Uh, he's, and he's done some, some interesting wiring things. And so uh, Dan Strain, Dan O'Caster, uh, and I went to see John Leventhal play with William Bell. And uh, pardon my reach, I've got to uh, find this. All right. This is a William Bell album that John uh, produced, and it won a Grammy. And this is probably the best R&B album I've heard in a very long time. Very, very long time. This is fantastic. So... Uh, for the album release, John put together an all-star band, and they did a show, I think, in New York, maybe Chicago and Nashville. And so I went and saw him at, in, at, for the Nashville show with Dan Strain. And we were up close, and we were watching him, and he was playing a three-pickup Telecaster. It had a you know, single-coil you know, strap pickup in the middle and normal bridge pickup. And you can tell he had a five-way switch. And he was moving it around, and we were completely confused because we were just like, that doesn't sound like a middle pickup, you know, when he'd have it in this position. Well, afterwards, I asked John, and he had rewired his Telecaster with a five-way switch in a really unique way that's really simple, too, that gives you a really good um, options as far as the, the pickups. So three pickup Telecaster, normal five-way switch, but... He just switched the lugs where the middle pickup and the bridge pickup were wired on the five-way. What that does is this. In your number one position, it's neck pickup like you would expect. The number two position, it's neck and bridge. The number three position is the bridge pickup by itself. The number four position is the middle pickup and the bridge pickup. And then the position, the number five position is the middle pickup by itself. And the reason he did that is so that he could get all the great Telecaster sounds, which of course the neck pickup by itself, bridge pickup by itself, and then these two together. And then he could still get the middle pickup by itself and he could get the back two pickups for that, uh, you know, 80s and 90s beer commercial blues guitar sound. So... Anyway, he did that. So that was just a, another uh, thing. So he's, you know, he's a guy that'll swap necks on guitars. He has an old 1970 Telecaster that he, he's kind of been playing for a long time. And it's got, you know, like a Fender Custom Shop neck on it now. And, you know, it's had a bunch of different pickups. And, yeah, just, you know, feel free to uh, modify guitars how, however they, they need to be modified so that they uh, serve you well. Number three, altered tunings. Um, 
in the past, I would only think about maybe drop D, you know, where I'd lower this E string to D and, you know, which of course was used in a fair number of, of country songs. But, uh, you know, John will use some altered tunings, especially this one that you take the low E string down two whole steps to C, and then you take your, uh, your A string and you tune it down one whole step to G. So you end up with C, G, D like normal, G like normal, B like normal, and E like normal. And so you just have these two that are dropped down. This one two whole steps and this one one whole step. And that's the sound you hear like on Get Out of This House on uh, Sean Colvin's uh, Few Small Repairs record. And that's, uh, it's, it's great for playing solo acoustic because you can play kind of out of a G shape and you have, you know, you have the, you know, uh, you have this open G string that you can hit. Then you have this low C string that's for your four chord. And then you can hit, you know, this string for your five chord for your D, or you can actually wrap your thumb around here and you can hit that on the second fret for a D note. And it's a, it's really neat for acoustic guitar parts. And also it's really great for um, Stonesy, Rye Cooter-ish kind of uh, rhythm guitar things. It's really, really neat. And also it kind of, that low C kind of takes it almost into the, like the baritone range and kind of gives you a, a really low kind of growly sound. Now he uses 11s or 12s on electric guitar, um, which I don't. And so that really works well for tuning down that far. On a set of 10s, it starts to get a little bit floppy, but a, obviously on acoustic guitar, it, it works great. But that's a, a wonderful trick. It's a wonderful thing to kind of put you know, in your bag and, uh, and pull out when, when needed, uh, you know, uh, tune, tuning down to, to C and G and, and having that option. All right. Number four is, uh, is use a minimalist pedal board. So one of the reasons, um, that I interviewed John, uh, was because there was basically no information on him on the web. I, I looked all over the place and there were some times where people had commented about seeing him live, but there really just wasn't anything. So I contacted him and he was uh, kind enough to uh, allow me to interview him. And we did that for the True Tone Lounge. And this was the day, a day or two after he had done the, the gig with William Bell. And so all he had was a Telecaster and a pedal board. And then he just used the deluxe reverb that we had there at the, at the offices there. And I was amazed to see his sm little small board because remember I'd done all these interviews with session guitar players and all of them had these huge pedal boards, you know, with tons of stuff on it and all sorts of gags and all sorts of crazy sounds that they would, they would pull up and, and do. And he just had a very straightforward, simple pedal board, no gags on it at all. And his sound, of course, he's a great player and he has great, great hands, but it, it reminded me of the pedal board that I used to use when I was growing up in, in Texas. You know, I didn't have a bunch of money and I just had a simple board and all the pedals were in a row, you know, just a single row of a, a tuner and five pedals. And they were all simple. And it was kind of like what I used to use when, yeah, when, when I was still back in Texas before I felt the pressure of having to have all these different sounds and all these effects and all these gags. And so I had most of the pedals he had. So I copied his pedal board setup, which is a tuner, a Mirage compressor, a uh, analog man modified tremolo, a Mostortion pedal, or sometimes that's the thing that he changes around the most is which overdrives in there, but he's used a Mostortion off and on since the early 90s, a Boss DM3 for slapback delay, and then a Line 6 Echo Park for tap tempo and, and longer delay times. And you know, and for me, it was kind of freeing because I had been using a pretty big pedal board with a lot of stuff on it and, you know, was doing all these gags, had all these different, you know, over the top kind of sound effects and things like that. And it was nice to simplify it and stop tap dancing so much and concentrate on playing the guitar. Also, and not to sound like the grumpy old man, but when you plug a guitar straight into an amp, it has an interaction and a purity to it that is lost when you start putting a bunch of stuff in between the guitar and the amp. I mean, these guitars and amps were designed to be plugged straight into each other, not with a bunch of stuff. 
And so I found that you can use five or six pedals and that's, and, and that's about as much as I can live with as far as, you know, messing with your tone. It's like when you start getting up 10, 20, you know, pedals and, and if you're a shoegazer or, you know, if you like a bunch of effects, that's fine. I mean, sometimes for the gig, you have to have all these different gags, but I like to concentrate more on getting a, a good pure guitar sound and then, you know, maybe using the capo, using slide, you know, where I play and just to, to get a, a, a variety of sounds that way instead of relying so much on pedals and tap dancing. So minimalist pedal board. I'm uh, all aboard with that. Number five would be low string melodies. So I just played, you know, at the intro of the show, I played the, the Sunny Came Home, you know, lick, which the, uh, the high part was actually played on a violin that he fretted and played, but then live he would play the part that I, that I did. And then you have the, uh, the low string part, which, you know, this is a pop song that got, you know, Grammy, got the, you know, song of the year. And uh, yeah, but yet he had this kind of clean, a little bit doinky sounding uh, electric guitar that really popped out and really, uh, yeah. And uh, I, I think it really, you know, made, help make the song, you know, that, that great intro. So another example uh, of him doing that kind of thing would be uh, live. I saw a, a clip of him playing on Austin City Limits with his wife, Roseanne Cash. And they were doing a song called 500 Miles, which is off the List album, which is a fantastic record that I highly recommend that you check out. Uh, all Really, you should check out everything that, that John has produced, but uh, the List is a, is a personal favorite. And on 500 Miles, um, the studio recording is acoustic guitar, but uh, live, he did it all on electric, and he did this kind of thing, which I really enjoyed. I had to make sure my tremolo was on. And so it was interesting because he played on the neck pickup, but played it really close to the bridge to get kind of a fat, doinky sound. And then he switched to both pickups. Of course, I think he was using a telly with a mini humbucker, but then played the double stops on the end and, and uh, they popped out. So that was, a, an, again, and so I've used that a lot where, you know, as guitar players, we tend to want to play melodies higher up on the neck or maybe in the mid range of the neck. But but on a Telecaster, you really have the advantage of being able to play these low string licks that you can use in any type of music. It doesn't have to be country, you know, to, uh, to really make uh, some, some fun, fun parts that will uh, get, get you noticed. And of course, always a tremolo is always a, a nice thing to put on there for that. All right, number six is get a sound hole pickup for your acoustic guitar. So seeing John live, um, and when he was playing acoustic guitar, I realized that he had, uh, he had like this weird stereo cable coming out of the guitar. And I was like, what, what are you doing there? And so he had on his acoustic guitar, he had both an under saddle pickup that was going to a DI for what you would think of as a normal kind of acoustic guitar sound. But then he also had a sound hole pickup and I think he was using some kind of Fishman. I think he was using the Fishman humbucking pickup. And uh, that was going through his pedal board and into his guitar amp and he was blending the two. And so I decided to try it. And so I just picked up, this is an, a 1980s Bill Lawrence pickup. And you can tell the 80s ones because they have this font that looks like this instead of just the type, you know, no, normal type. And uh, it's wonderful. Uh, and I've, I've used it live and, uh, and it's, it's a wonderful thing to do. It really kind of broadens the sound of the guitar. It almost sounds like two instruments. And uh, I'll use a volume pedal on this signal. And that way you can kind of pull it back you know, when you're wanting to be more in the background and then when you're wanting to kind of come forward and kind of, you know, play a line or just be more up front, 
you pull more of this forward and it's a, a really, really great sound. And I've really enjoyed doing that. And that's, uh, you know, completely stole from John and he does it even in the studio, of course, where he'll just mic up the acoustic, but then also use a sound hole pickup like, you know, and he has a bunch of different sound hole pickups. I've seen him with old DeArmond's, you know, from the fifties to Bill Lawrence to the Fishman, all sorts of things. Sometimes he'll just tape them in place. And, uh, this is a really great, you know, and cheap, you know, thing that you can pick up that really, uh, no, <laughs> not trying to be funny, but that you can, uh, really, you know, give yourself a bigger acoustic sound and more options. And, uh, and it's really nice when you're playing acoustic and electric guitar to be able to kind of have a, a dual use of your electric rig, you know, with the acoustic guitar. All right. Number seven is uh, you know, another kind of phil philosophical concept. And it's something that I've, you know, I've heard from multiple people, but uh, John, you know, really put it well about getting out of your headspace as a guitarist or bassist or whatever instrument that you play and to think like an arranger or producer, and which really means to, to be humble and to serve the song, to serve the vocalist with, with reverence. And uh, that's what keeps people wanting to work with you. And, uh, you know, you know, John will kind of stretch out more live, but on, on the record, you know, he's, uh, you know, has great reference reverence for the artist and the song and always does, you know, what, what fits. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's set, set the bar on that and, uh, really enjoy that aspect of, of his playing. So, uh, of course, if you want to take a deep dive, I really highly recommend that you watch the, uh, the interview that I've done with him for the True Tone Lounge or that you can read the uh, article I wrote that, uh, you know, for Vintage Guitar Magazine. Again, the links will be in the description. Also, I'm going to make a Spotify playlist and, uh, you know, because he's done so much great work with Sean Colvin, uh, Mark Cohn, with his wife, Roseanne Cash, and, uh, you know, many others. And, uh, yeah, and really, and that William Bell album is, uh, is a particular, you know, favorite, but, uh, you should, you should, uh, listen to those and, uh, and glean as much as you can. And, uh, and again, it's not about, you know, picking up licks as much as it is picking up concepts and, and being inspired. So, all right, guys, well, I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.